Say, what's in this no drink? Caps to be had out there. I wish I knew how. Your eyes are like stars to right break now. This spell. I'll take your hat. Your hair looks swell. I ought to say no, no, no. Mind if I move in closer. At least I'm going to say that I tried. What's the sense of hurting That's the classic mind. Christmas song, Baby, It's Cold Outside. It was written during the Second World War, and it's been a Christmas staple ever since. But some people are now finding offense with some of those lyrics. The song has been characterized as, quote, rapey. Needless to say, there was a balderdized, politically correct version written and recorded with updated lyrics. Here's a sad sample of it. What is this dream? Pomegranate the Croy. I wish I knew how Maybe I'll help you to out. break this spell. Girl, I don't know what you're talking about. I ought to say no, 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 you sir. You reserve the right to say no. At least I'm going to say that I tried. You reserve the right. Quick, which version is more appealing? That's rhetorical, of course. Joining us now, Vox reporter Emily Crockett, who's written a ton about both <laughs> versions of the song. Emily, it's great to see you. Great to see you too, Tucker. Now, feminists, maybe unfairly, have had this reputation as humorless scolds, as you Quite know. Unfairly. Yeah. I'm not sure attacks on this <laughs> song do much to fight that perception. Sure. So, I think your first problem is considering it an attack, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's... Well, you it's... called it rapey. That's not a positive. <laughs> Wait, did, I, did I call it rapey? No, you, said, you, well, you said others have called yeah, it rapey. Yeah, yeah. So what I did in my piece is I did two readings of it, right? So I did the, the rapey reading and the romantic reading. Because when I listen to this song, I honestly have sort of two reactions to it, right? Like, I'm, I, in, in the context of the time, I think it's pretty clear that, you know, women did not have much sexual agency in the 40s, right? Like, it, women were not really allowed to express sexual desire or to, you know, take initiative um, in starting, you know, a sexual situation. And so they sort of had to play hard to get or had to just allow themselves to be seduced rather than, you know, say, like, this is what I want. And so... But the decision was fundamentally theirs, wouldn't you say? Well, sure. Well... So wouldn't that put mm, them in control? Uh, wouldn't what put them in control? Well, if the decision is yours, you're not a passive victim, you're in the driver's seat. If, if the question is, do you assent or not, if someone's trying to persuade you, that suggests it's your decision. Well, so that's, that, that's an interesting way of putting it. Um, was that true? The, <laughs> well, so, but it's, there's a difference between, so like putting pressure on a woman to have sex is just not cool for a variety. Like there's, there's a difference between like, a negotiation uh -huh. and you know a predation right so okay. when you look at the original version of this song the interesting thing is that the man's part is labeled wolf and the woman's part is labeled mouse which is right. like oh that's kind of creepy but so I mean there, there's when you listen to this why, song, is that, why is that creepy because you know like it's like making the man a predator and the woman a prey but like, isn't, instead of an isn't equal seduction partner. about ambivalence <laughs> at some, I mean it doesn't have to be okay so if it's not about ambivalence what if it's not seduction though right well, it, so like the so the question is, you know, is seduction the ideal, okay. right? Like so, the question here is, do we want women to have sexual agency? Do we want women to have a say, right? Do we want women to just sort of be per, to always only be pursued? Um, because really, when when you look okay, at this, I feel song, like I'm back at Vassar now in my feminist poetry <laughs> class. Let, let me just let me just I didn't go to Vassar. Just kidding. But um, I didn't. So you that. have this flash of self-awareness at the end of the piece, which I just loved. You said flash this. You did. This this was this was the bright part of the piece. I thought at a certain point, spending hundreds of words <laughs> close reading a Christmas song starts to feel a little silly. Oh, of course. What's the point of yelling at people on the internet about this? Mm -hmm. Do you wish you'd stop there? No. No. Well, so, so it is a box explainer, right? Because this is a debate on the internet, and people have been hearing about it and reading about it. Right. And the reason I wrote the piece is that people might be curious why this is a debate. So the, the, the issue is that it's a debate over whether the song um, promotes you know, problematic ideas of consent, right? Don't you think that's a debate that's completely confined to small groups of silly rich people? No. You don't? No. Okay. So here's, the, here's my question. I mean, I want to take this seriously, and I feel yeah. there are threats to women's, as you put, agency and rights. And totally. one of them is 
female genital mutilation, which is really common in the United States among immigrants and refugees. Yeah. It's really common. Yeah, but Hundreds of thousands of like, people at risk for that. Sure. I never hear feminists mention it at all. Uh, I hear feminists mention it a lot. You do? Really? Yeah. I don't, I've never seen a yeah, Fox piece like, on it. Yeah, but also, like, that is that is a just totally, you know, that's, that, that is a distraction from the issue. Like, just because there are worse things, we can't care about but that's, rape. like, the worst thing I can imagine. I don't and know. And this is do a you? Christmas song that's like, yeah, okay, <laughs> maybe. It was written 70 so, years ago. So here's the thing. Culture matters, right? Like, what we listen to, and I, and I know conservatives feel this way, too, about culture, right? Like, we worry about the signals we're sending our kids. And if the signal we're sending our young men is that it's okay to badger and badger and pressure and pressure and not listen to a woman, not respect right. her well, I'm against when that. she says no. But yeah, but if you listen to the song. So again, Wait, I have very on, ambivalent it, feelings about it. I, right? I, I can tell that you do, but yeah. isn't it maybe even a bigger threat to our country and our minds to politicize art relentlessly? No. Where the, you don't think it is. Well, so there I, can be well, no I, I, so, safe so, space from so politics. <laughs> Everything is about political ideology. Doesn't that make you a little, is that a little yeah. Orwellian? No. Oh. <laughs> A little bit. No, so, so, so there is a difference between politiciz politicization and criticism and analysis and discussion. <laughs> we should be able to analyze and discuss our culture without being accused of being PC police, right? That's silly. Unless, of course, we are PC police. But in which case, <laughs> in which case like, I think it's yeah, fair. Any, okay. we criticize Un something. Oh. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Emily, well, it was great to see you. You've transported you me back to college. I think I've got to be in that course. Hope I got <laughs> a higher grade tonight. Thank you. Remember, hey, what's in this drink? No caps to be had out there. I wish I knew how. Your eyes are like stars to right break now. This spell. I'll take your hat. Your hair looks swell. I ought to say no, no, no. Mind if I move any closer. At least I'm going to say that I tried. What's the sense of hurting my pride? That, of course, the classic Christmas song, Baby, It's Cold Outside, written during the Second World War, but it's 70 years later, so that means someone somewhere found something to be offended about. Some say the lyrics have creepy, offensive overtones, so a new version was penned with updated lyrics. Here it is. What is this dream? Pomegranate of the Croy. I wish I knew how Maybe I'll help you to out. break this spell. I don't know what you're talking about. I have to say no, 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 you sir. You reserve the right to say no. At least I'm going to say that I tried. You reserve the right. Joining us now, the singers and the songwriters you just saw, the ones who wrote that updated version, Lydia Liza and Josiah Lemansky. Lydia, Josiah, thanks a lot for joining Hi, us. Hey, yeah, thank, thank you, you for having great us. Great voices, and I listened to your song about five times. You're obviously really talented. What was wrong thank with you. the original version? Yeah. Why not just sing that? It seems a little better to me. Why didn't you? Yeah, the original version, um, we don't, I mean, it's, it's fine. We do like the original version as well. Uh, the thing is, is just that listening to it in, um, our generation's context is definitely different from the 1940s context. Yeah. It yeah. sounds different to, to, different, to different ears. So yeah. what, do you, what do you mean by that? Sounds d different is not good in this case, I have the feeling. Or you wouldn't have rewritten it. Well, we rewrote it just as like a fun thing to do between us. Um, yeah. We, we weren't necessarily offended by the first version. We just were listening through it and we were like, that doesn't sound so great when you take all the music away and the history of it. Today it sounds pretty, pretty creepy. Pretty creepy. So, but I mean, you're young yeah. people. You live in the modern world. You hear hip hop and rap. I mean, references, explicit yeah. references to rape, encouragement to rape, is really common. Yeah. In that music, do you ever it's rewrite true. any of it? Yeah. Have you rewritten any no, Lil I mean, Wayne or anything? No. no. And we're we're completely aware of that too. Yeah. But again, it wasn't necessarily like an attack on anything. Yeah. It was right? more just uh, fun, and it seemed contextual because it's Christmas time, and the song was on the radio a lot, and you know, we don't agree with those types of lyrics at all in, in other right. songs like that. We don't condemn that at all. But I guess we weren't really out to change the, the whole world on this. <laughs> yeah, or get rid of the original at all. We right. just wanted to update it to new, n new ears. You know? So the, the critique has been that you made it less romantic, that while consent is obviously essential, and I don't think anyone would contest that, Explicit legalistic yeah. consent maybe is less romantic than, say, implication or nuance. Do you see that? Yeah, and we did that. We did it on purpose. I mean, we were trying to be like militant and funny about it. It was especially yeah. the part where he says, You reserve the right to say no twice. Yeah, we realized. No one's going to say that in a regular conversation, and we know that. <laughs> yeah. was, but what do I know? Yeah. No, that would be, <laughs> that'd be weird. But does it seem yeah. like we're in the middle? I mean, it's always important, I think, to remember that we're in an era, no matter what, where we're mm -hmm. living or when, we're in a moment 
And that maybe our current yeah. moment is, is a moral panic of, of a sort, where people are very easily offended and a Twitter, and there's a lot of pearl clutching going on about this or that offensive statement. Yeah. Do you feel that? Would you notice that? Yeah, I, I totally agree with you on that. In the in the PC cops kind of stuff, like that really is going on right now, and people are offended because we're having we're trying to have so many conversations at once with like the right. oversaturation of media and stuff. So it's hard to focus on one thing at a time, and so everybody right. gets upset about a lot of things at once because there's a ton to be upset about. Yeah, a lot of information. Yeah. So what do you think? I mean, all, all kinds of traditional children's songs. If you look at them through the lens that a lot of people are looking at this song through, it's easy to get offended. I mean, Yankee Doodle yeah. Dandy has a line in there about with the girls be handy. Is that adding to rape culture, do you think? Or Mary Had a Little Lamb, is that insensitive, do you think, to the animal rights people? Does it feel that way? You know, not, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that that's, you know, offensive or that's promoting rape, but I think it, it can't hurt to just update it, I mean, you know, just yeah. update it to uh, a different song if you want to. Let's just kind of have some fun with it. Yeah. So like you know, Yankee I mean, Doodle we, got the girl's consent before getting handy with her sort of thing? No, yeah, not necessarily. No. But I mean, it's, it's, you know, kids, everyone's un, afraid of what the kids are listening to and mm -hmm. they want to make sure that they're right. listening to good, wholesome stuff. And yeah. sometimes right. it can be taken differently than how other kids take it. So change, making one updated version as just a, an example of, uh, you know, a good example of a respectful conversation or the correct right. way to do something couldn't necessarily hurt. Yeah. You're familiar with the song Frere Jaca, right? Yeah. You know, Frere Jaca. Yeah. I mean, there's a line in there where he's asleep and the morning bells are ringing and he doesn't wake up and I'm feeling like, well, maybe that's a little insensitive to narcoleptics. Does that feel that way to you at all? <laughs> oh, no. That was really funny. No. 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 Okay, good. Just a pass. <laughs> I just want to see you. We're on the same page. I, I love it. Know it's that. great yeah. to see you. And as much as I'm making yeah. fun of this, because I think it needs to be made fun of. You're obviously really talented, and I appreciate your coming on. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Tucker. Thanks, Tucker. Really, really appreciate Thanks. it.